Uh, hello, hello everybody and welcome to the University of Bolton Stadium, the uh, home of the famous Bolton Wanderers Football Club. But on Friday night, this place houses big time boxing. It's back live and free to wear on Channel 5. Lyndon Arthur from Manchester facing Brian Suarez for the vacant IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Um, it marks the return of Wasserman Boxing first show of 2023 and uh, we will um, speak to each of the undercard fighters in turn before we speak to Lyndon and Brian of course about their big fight. Um, it's a show that really does sort of punch above its weight, not only that IBO World title fight the headliner, but a show packed with 50-50 fights, uh, title eliminators, local, national and international stars really will not want to be missed live on five on Friday night, 10 p.m. Um, as I say, we'll speak to each of the guys, but first we'll turn to uh, Callis Sutherland, head of Wasserman Boxing Global, um, to set the scene for us. Callis, um, how thrilled are you to be bringing back big time boxing, free to wear, live on Channel 5? Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, amazing to be in this historic football stadium. I'm aware it's a new ground, but still a historic football club. Um, and yes, uh, Friday night marks the, the first fight, uh, well, the first card on Channel 5 this year. Um, and we're looking forward to, you know, we fit that to Friday, but we've filled all the slots. It's a 12 fight card, you can't get deeper than that. Um, got some amazing talent up here. Um, I'm looking forward to see some of them for the first time. Um, from Wasserman awesome Boxing, of course, we have Chloe Watson as well. Um, her first outing this year after a very strong finish to 2022 and you know the light heavyweight division uh, is certainly a talking point at the moment in this country as it is abroad um, if you look at the big fights internationally whether it's Baturbia, Bebo, um, I think Callum Smith sort of earned that right to be classified outside of the, the domestic scene um, but at the same time you know there's some massive international fights and I've seen a lot of comments and quotes from certain fighters talking about those big international fights but you know I think it's it's a fight on Friday night where Lyndon King of the North can put himself above the Boatsis, above the Yards, above the Dan Azizis um, and those fights can come and they will come um, you know, uh, they will come, um, they'll come on our terms as, as hopefully world champion on Friday night. We have a tough mission in front of us, Operation Argentina, similar records. I think for the, for the spectator, um, when you get a main event at light heavyweight um, with the jewels on the table, um, you have, you know, you're excited when you read close to 90% knockout ratios. Um, I don't think the judges will be needed. I'm very confident in my man. Uh, I believe in Lyndon. I believe that Lyndon is the one that's often overlooked. But let's make this also very clear. On Friday night, Lyndon will have more viewers than Yard, Boatsi, Aziz put together in their last two fights. So in their all six, I would guarantee that, look, I would make a bet that uh, out of their last six fights in total, We'll have more viewers on Friday night watching Lyndon take gold. And that's what boxing is about. Also, for the, for the guys and girls on the undercard, this is a space that is very special. It's very important to boxing. We've done it over the last few decades, both here and abroad. And that's the way you build name, bring names through. And, um, and then, of course, you know, you look at other platforms, but there is there's this home of boxing on Channel 5, and that's so, so important for for the, for the whole domestic scene. And, and Carla, just speaking about that platform live and, and free to air on five, how important therefore is it that Lyndon can make a statement maybe to those guys that you mentioned, the Aziz, the Boatis, the rest of the guys in a, in a thriving light heavyweight division? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when you're facing a guy who's got a 90% knockout ratio, I'll, I'll take the win however it comes. Yeah? Um, that was the promoter talk selling the fight. Um, main thing is, this one stays right here or goes back to Manchester on Friday night. But at the same time, you know, what I said about free to air, it's it's just important to have 
broadcasters are all involved in boxing and at the moment you see the amazing things that the zone are doing you know sky sports puts on some great boxing bt sports but it's just very special when you know it is just available you know number five on the old remote control and they don't exist anymore but um uh, 105 on on your skybox um but it, it's that it's the fact that we're going to get viewers who don't normally watch boxing and i'm sure my man Lyndon is going to put on a show as everyone else will on the card um that wins new fans for the sport uh, and just the last one Kai, before we, we move on to the undercard um let's talk about the bell that is a prestigious bit of hardware roy jones has owned it bernard hopkins chad dawson the uh, real cars, I think don't we promoted them as well. Um there's you know Golovkin. Um this 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 we don't really break any bones here, I'm not gonna sell you a false uh, a false car here. It's not one of the four major belts, but it's also recognised globally as a world title. And broadcasts recognise it as a world title and, and you've heard some of the names who've carried this belt. But no one else in the UK will own one of these if we're successful on on Friday night. No one else in the light heavyweights can say that. So I think that puts us ahead in the in the race. And the race is to crack out the domestic scene. You've got to go through those big fights domestic. We're aware, we're aware of that. You know, we watched the yard, yard put on a, on a strong performance game for Turbia, but at the end of the day it was, it was still well short. And you know, this is about for us having that marker, having that bargaining chip um, to put in in those big fights which we know we need to go through to, to go and, and fight the likes of Perturbiev, um, Bevo, you know, always got Canelo floating around depending on his weight on the day around the light heavyweights now as well. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very inter amazing international weight class at the moment but also happens to have a fantastic um, you know, domestic one, and you know, um, as you well know, um, I'm a big fan of putting on big domestic fights, and I think they, they always appeal. And I think that a light heavyweight, um, you know, together with probably the middleweights at the moment, and you could argue the heavyweights as well um, when they eventually get made. Um, those are the three weight classes where, where, where I really see a lot of a lot of domestic, big, big, um, it's called mainstream fights can be made. Um, thank you, Kai. We'll, uh, we'll move on to uh, speaking to the undercard fighters now. Um, Birkenhead's formidable flyweight, Chloe Watson, unbeaten in four fights as a pro. Um, last year, Chloe, three fights. What does an ideal 2023 look like for you? Um, busy. Yeah, last year was good. And Friday's going to be a great night. That's one that I'm looking forward to. I want to thank everyone that's coming, everyone that's tuning in live on Channel 5. Yeah, last time out was fun, and um, we've been working hard, and I'm looking forward to building on from that performance. Is it unrealistic to be talking or targeting by the end of year, moving into title contention? No, definitely not. Um, it's something you know we want to be working towards, and I feel like we are working towards. You know, we're taking them steps, and you know, a box at a high level as an amateur. So. You know, if there's someone that's going to be doing it as a second year pro, um, it should be me. Kyle, I could just bring you back in on Chloe. Um, unbeaten, look frightening at times in the ring so far. Channel 5 audience have already seen that. What What would you like to deliver for uh, Chloe this year? Uh, activity. Um, you know, Chloe's our princess in Liverpool, and we're going to crown her queen soon. Uh, as soon as she lifts the world title, she will get there. Um, We've historically done it within our stable, Cecilia Brecus, taking her from, from zero world titles to all of them, um, Clara Svensson and, and, and many others. But Chloe has that special uh, grit about her and, and Ricky worked well in the gym and the team. That's the bacon I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, yeah, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's always exciting to work with someone from the very beginning and you get this you know you get you get on the ride and, and but for this year it's, it's certainly activity we've got to do our job not only providing activity but also with the with the federations um you know it's not like it was 10 years ago in female boxing where you could quickly get through to a world title pretty pretty easy um not taking away anything away from that generation that generation led to this generation coming through now and the interest in female boxing 
but it's a tougher way now. And Chloe's got to do it the hard way, but she's going to do it. Um, and she's going to make Birkenhead and Liverpool very, very proud. Um, one of the gems on a brilliant undercard on Friday night is the uh, final eliminator for the English title uh, between Wigan's James Moorcroft and Liverpool's Nathan Bears. Uh, James, if I can bring you in, um, what can fans expect from this fight? Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for putting this fight on this fantastic show, world title show. Um, I think it's a definitely 50-50 fight. Uh, we're both going to come for it. We've both got everything to lose. And uh, come Friday night, the fans are going to get an absolutely amazing fight, and there's a few more great fights in it as well for that number. Um, Danny Ball and Anthony Tomlinson are due to fight for the for the title. Have you a preference if you come through on Friday? Who would you like to face? Um, I'd probably like to fight Anthony Tomlinson because I think Danny Ball's better than him. But um, yeah, so that'd be that be one. But I've got a big fight on Friday. Uh, massive respect to Nathan Bennett. Massive respect to myself for taking. Genuine 50-50 fights, I think boxing needs genuine 50-50 fights and there is two here on this card. Um, so like, yeah, again, thank you so much for putting it on. But um, come Friday night, you know, once again, the game plan right. Anthony Crowder is my coach now. Um, I believe I'm going to be successful on Friday and push it on for that English title. Thank you. Um, Nathan, three, uh, coming in the back of three wins, confidence must be high. Yeah. In, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and just want to thank him, Michael Calipari, and giving us the opportunity to be managed to do a bit boxing. And yeah, um, looking forward to Friday night. Big respect to James. You know, we didn't um, we took this fight with um, not on the line at the end of it. We were meant to be four to match, eleven to match. We didn't know one in the um, the ball doors for the final minute, which I'm happy about. That just shutting at the end of it. You know, for both of us. You know, and come Friday night, I'll be coming away victorious. Nathan James has, has sort of touched on it there. I mean, I think that I think people who understand this fight think it maybe could steal the show. It could be fight of the night. What you know? Do you agree with that? You think it could be that the gels, the styles could gel, and this really could be a firecracker. Um, yeah, but it depends on <clears throat> what way I want to box. You know what I mean? If I want to go out there and box, and if I want to go out there and fight, and it, it, it all depends. But I'm sure Friday night, both of us are saying that and and it's going to be a, a good fight for the fans on Channel 5 and for everyone that's coming down to support. Brilliant. So uh, also on the card on Friday is a real tasty looking eight rounder in the super lightweight division. Uh, Manchester's Kane Gardner against Connor Walker of Wolverhampton. Um, Kane, what will Connor bring on Friday night and how will you combat that? Um, yeah, I know what Connor brings. Um, we spied loads of rounds together in our early, early days. Um, good friends with Connor, but um, you know it's business. Um, yeah, we've got a good game plan, me and my coach. So it comes off on a night, victorious. And what will a victory lead to you for, uh, lead for you, Joe? Know? I'm hoping victory get um, like get signed by a promotion, a big promotion, or um, get a, get a title. Because um, we're trying to get fights with guys on um, like um, Sky and all that, and they've been turning me down. So uh, yeah, I just want big fights, big nights. Um, Connie, you're sort of coming into the lion's den. If you were any concerns about fighting Kane on home turf? No concerns for me, mate. Um, it's a good fight. It's a good fight that I need at this stage of my career. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a good, it's a good uh, measuring stick to see where I'm at. Uh, I know Kane's a good fighter. Like I said, we've we've done we've shot, shared the ring many times. Um, so I'm looking forward to a good fight. I think um, Kane's going to bring it, but I'm um, like me and my coach have got a good game plan. I think I think we'll come away with the win. You, you both mentioned that you've shared rounds before. Are you taking anything from those experiences that's given you sort of confidence going into the fight? Sparring, sparring for me. Um, I think the rounds, as kind of say himself, um, 50 50 rounds. There's not there's nothing in them. Um, so it is what it is. Sparring is different to fighting. Eight ounce gloves, no head guard. Um, there's a hell of a difference. So yeah, like, like I said, the rounds was good. Um, there was no standout from either side. It was um, it was it, it is what it is. Okay, good stuff. So let's now uh, move on to the main event as we go: the uh, vacant IBO light heavyweight title of the world, Lindon Arthur against Brian Suarez. Um, 
Brian, we'll start with you. Um, welcome to the UK. Um, can you explain to the fight fans why you believe you can defeat Lyndon Arthur on Friday? Bienvenidos, Reino Unido. ¿Puedes explicar a los fans del Reino Unido por qué crees que le va a ganar a Lyndon Arthur? Bueno, buenas tardes. Eh, es muy feliz de estar aquí en el Reino Unido. Eh, estoy contento y agradecido por esta oportunidad. Agradezco a la promotora. Eh, bueno, creo que esta oportunidad me la gané y, y voy a hacer todo lo posible el viernes para, para poder llevarme la victoria. I'm really happy and really thankful for this opportunity that Wasserman has given me and I'll do everything on my hand to take my victory away home. Um, Brian, you, you obviously you, you respect Lyndon, but also it, this week you've mentioned that he has weaknesses. What are those weaknesses? Dice que respeta a Lyndon, pero dice que tiene también debilidades. ¿Cuál crees que son esas debilidades? Eh, las debilidades de Lyndon? Sí. No, todos los boxeadores tenemos debilidades. Eh, he visto algunas en él y voy a intentar aprovecharlas el viernes. Eh, eso me las guardo para mí. I'm not going to tell you what his weaknesses are. All of, every boxer has weaknesses. Uh, I'll take advantage of them. I've seen a few weaknesses of him and I'll take advantage of them on Friday. Um, 17 knockouts on your record, Brian. Do you feel confident enough that it would be 18 on Friday? Tiene 17 knockouts en tu record. ¿Crees que van a ser 18 knockouts el viernes? Ojalá así sea, pero vamos a hacer todo lo posible. Eh, yo no me preocupo por el nocao, no lo busco, llega solo y vamos a hacer todo lo posible para ganar, sea por nocao o por puntos. Mm. We are gonna do, I'm, I hope I win by KO, but uh, it's not a, an obsession for me. I'm looking forward to winning either on points or by KO. Okay, thank you. Um, Lyndon, just coming to you. Um, People may not know too much about Suarez, but you will have looked at him and, and studied him in preparation. What sort of problems will he pose on Friday? Uh, he's, a, he's a good fighter. He's, he he proposes a, a good record. He's got obviously good power. He's, um, he's knocked out 16 or 17 wins. I'm excited for the um, I'm excited for the fight. I'm excited to see what he brings. Um, as we mentioned before, that IBO title in the light heavyweight division has been held by Roy Jones, Hopkins, Chad Dawson, some great names. What would it mean to you to be added to that list? It's a, it's a good title to have. It's a nice title. It looks, it looks nice and shiny as well, so I'll be excited to get my hands on it. The fans are desperate to see these huge domestic fights at £175. Um, of, the, of the potential fights that get mentioned and you will get asked about a lot, you know, these these Bluatsi, maybe Yard again, is there one that really kind of sort of excites you most, gets the adrenaline pumping a bit more than the other? This one on Friday, if I know, and then after that we'll speak about it. Is it in, in terms of what comes from this event, it's the IBO title, but is it also in, so in your dreams to deliver those huge nights for Manchester, like we've seen before, Anthony Collins is obviously here today, Ricky Hatton. Can you be that next figure to deliver the big nights you know, in Manchester? Yeah, hopefully. I've, I've been to a lot of Collins fights, so I was there when he won the world title. And, you know, to, to, to go in his footsteps and fill out arenas like here, it would be great. But, you know, at least, like I said, hopefully I can definitely fill out in footsteps. And just a final one, can you give us a prediction for the fight? Uh, and then the last victory. Thank you everybody. Well, that's, uh, that concludes today's press conference. Uh, just a reminder, Friday night, 10 o'clock, live and free to air on Channel 5. Uh, fighters will now pose for head-to-head -head, uh, pitches and then uh, any remaining interviews that people need, we can uh, arrange. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs>